You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another epic episode of Ask a Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode 703. And as always, we really appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with us. Drive safe, have a great day, go fly, uh, enjoy the cooler weather. I don't know, maybe you're somewhere where it's warm, and then I'm jealous. <laughs> wherever you're at, we're grateful that you're listening. Definitely grateful. Um, yeah, definitely grateful. Uh, if you want to support this show, by the way, uh, please become a member. You can actually get a whole lot out of supporting the show because if you're a member, you're a student, you get access to now 27 courses. We said 26 last week. Now we're saying 27 because it's true. Some good stuff too. Very in-depth course that gets launched this week. Excited about that. Yeah, I'm very excited. There's been a lot of people asking for this for a while. Thank you for your patience if that's you, but it's here. Yeah. In the next couple of days, few days. Very excited about that. So it's gonna be great. Anyway. Actually, by the time this airs, it might actually be on. I really hope so. <laughs> I know you do. All right. <laughs> um, also, a special thank you to all of our uh, members who are existing members, and a special thank you to Video Blocks and Audio Blocks. Um, if you need some background footage, just a little extra stuff, some extra stuff, mm -hmm. then uh, increase the production value. Check them out videobox.com forward slash drone. All right, Rob, why you play that question? Hi, Paul and Rob. This is Mike from California. I have a photography and drone business, and I'm looking to get into construction, progress reporting, mapping, modeling, things like that. One of the things that I have been really looking into lately is after reading some things, ground control points can be really time consuming. So I've seen a lot of things about using RTK and PPK models to still be precise, but not have to lay out the ground control points. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that in terms of recommendations for using something RTK, what we should know getting into it, um, and specifically what options do we have if we wanted to go down the road of using the unique H520, since you say that's great for mapping. All right, thanks. All right. Well, Paul, you've asked for some questions that are going a little deeper. I like the deep questions. I think he uh, delivered. And uh, just so happens that this is something that we're filming another class on as we speak. Yeah, we actually have um, five propeller GCPs in the other room right now. Uh, we even learned the importance of making fake GCPs. So essentially you create a GCP. Th this is all thanks to PJ uh, Kirkpatrick, the famous... Squatter, and I mean that in the best of ways. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be famous, uh, and probably I, not for squatting. You no, know, I mean squatting. <laughs> like on one time we did a webinar, and I was talking about how doing squats in the morning just really helps me wake up more than coffee or anything. Um, and it's true for exercise, really waking you up in the morning. But anyway, he started doing squats on the webinar, and I was like, "You're the man." Like, seriously, you are the man. And um, he has the uh, special place of being the only person to ever have done that, like actually respond to it, your calling out of doing squats. But it works. It's just, it's like one of those things you're like, Psh. like, I, well, I learned a long time ago that if something defies common sense, it's probably correct, which is so true in this case. Most mm -hmm. people are like, common sense, like, no, I'll just drink coffee like that. Yeah, it takes too much work. Or oh, I'm too lazy. Or, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't feel like it. There's a reason uh, it's hard and it's because it works. So anyway, um, but yes, he's also going to be teaching our construction progression mapping and our construction uh, contracting class, I guess. I, we cell haven't really tied, titled it yet. But yeah, in addition to the mm -hmm. cell tower mapping class, if you're getting into cell phone tower mapping, and um, that will essentially put us way far above the competition in uh, in having classes that go over industry specific mapping and uh, and essentially you know we're, now we're going into uh, content that's really focused on doing specific jobs so yes there's mapping but what about for construction what about cell phone tower because they're very different what about doing larger areas and um, we're actually integrating GCPs into the construction class and you know PJ's really been teaching me a lot about GCPs and using um, propeller versus trimble and why and 
Um, you know, we've done a lot of research on this already, but having some of that real world experience and we've been using GCPs now with golf course mapping, which is really, really beneficial. But the long and the short of it is you create a fake GCP and we're actually going to have a YouTube video on this soon. So make sure to check out for it because we go in the step by step. It's really simple, really easy to do. I was actually nervous because like, oh, I got to go to Lowe's today. This sucks. <laughs> so I used to love going to Lowe's. So I'm like, oh, I get to build something. But now with such a lack of time, it's like, oh no, what am I getting myself into? Just got to get the stuff done. It's true. But it if you follow this system, it's actually really, really simple. Um, but you create these quote unquote fake GCP you lay them on the ground, you stake them down, and then you put your propeller GCP over it. You mark that, and then you leave the fake GCP there. It's clever. That way, you don't have thousands of dollars left on the construction site. It's very clever. Could I ask you to do something for us, though? What? Kind of back up a little bit and just talk briefly for those that this is relatively new information to. the different. Like, what is a GCP? What is RTK? What are the differences? Just maybe a little what bit of What is PPK? A, yeah. It's the gun that James Bond used Did back I say in the PPK? day. PPK? Well, the, the, he asked for PPK. He said RTK or PPK. Oh, okay. So uh, that was a Bond joke, but it whoosh. went right over my bald head. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. late in the day. Uh, GCP, yeah, we're actually filming these really late in the day. So if it sounds a little different, that is why. Uh, GCP is a ground control point, and they're really, really beneficial for creating better relative accuracy for drone maps and drone models, whatever uh, terminology you like to use. I like to say drone models, but other everyone else in the industry says drone mapping, but that can potentially get you in trouble depending on what state you live in. Um, that being said, GCPs or ground control points essentially take GPS data better than this data is better quality than what you would find in a Phantom. It's better quality than what you would find in a Typhoon H. It's uh, better quality than you would find, especially in a Solo. Holy cow. Um, but the GCP data essentially is accurate down to two to six centimeters. And if you use PPK GPS versus RTK, um, RTK, I believe, stands for real-time kinetic. Let me just double check this really quick. G GPS RTK definition. I'm pretty sure it stands for real-time kinetic. Ha, ah, I was right. Oh, no. Real-time kinematic. Kinematic. I was almost right. Anyway, um, PBK GPS is actually military grade GPS and is mm. like literally down to the millimeter, whereas RTK GPS is down to the centimeter. But it's really, really important for drone mapping, not only in relative accuracy, but in addition to um, in getting accuracy for maps. So one one issue that we've had is is doing drone mapping over golf courses. And the, the golf course map was in the right location as far as on a regular like Google Maps, but the elevation was jacked compared to a topo from the same area from the government. Hmm. So getting good elevation GPS data in our drones is actually very difficult. And what GCPs do is help get a better um, overall accuracy of the GPS location, but more importantly, elevation. Okay. So you're getting better relative accuracy for for your drone maps and your drone models by using the GCPs. So cool. they're very, very important uh, if you want to get the, the most accurate data possible, especially if you're working with like a surveying team and they're signing off on your models. There's no way they're ever going to sign off on your models unless you use GCPs. Interesting. Okay, so... You guys are actually going out to a site tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What are you? What, how, what's the setup going to look like? How are you going to do it? So um, that's actually a great question. I love you, Rob. <laughs> I love you too, Paul. You, you ask the best questions. You know that. <laughs> Thank you're you. So intelligent. Oh my gosh. I'm anyway, blushing. All right, I'm going to stop now. Um, you're a horrible person. Okay, I feel better now. <laughs> I feel much better too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, there was a little bromance going on there for a second. Um, it's a good question, though, because like if you use a Trimble GPS, the way that you aggregate the data out of the GPS receiver into your maps is a lot more difficult than what you do with Propeller. I mean, Propeller is as simple as you lay down the GCP, you press a button, ba boom, ba boom, everything's done. You go and you press the button again on your different uh, GCP sites. You send that data up to the cloud uh, over to Australia, which used to take couple days. Mm -hmm. Now it takes a couple hours, if, if that, to get all that data back to you so you can actually put that GCP data into Pix4D or Photoscan, whatever you're using. I would really recommend Pix4D for this, especially over Photoscan. Um, 
But with Trimble and other systems, it's a little bit more uh, burdensome to get the data, just a lot more hands-on, you know, as far as getting the actual GPS data Mm -hmm. off of a Trimble unit. There are actually some Russian units. And by the way, I got the price of Propeller totally wrong. I was saying it was like 2200 bucks or 1800 bucks. It's 2500 bucks for five propeller units. But I really love, you know, PJ's hack with just buy one mm-hmm. and then mark the different areas and set down the fake GCP. That way, when you're actually modeling the area with your drone, you know, you have the the visual GCP on the ground. Right. You've already recorded that data. And the other beautiful thing about this, it cost me, and by the way, I bought way too many tiles, so I'm sorry I wasn't efficient with our money. It cost me $74 today to build eight fake GCPs versus $500 for one Each. real one. Yeah. Yeah. So if you here's the beautiful thing. If you're doing progression uh, modeling and you're actually doing a map of the construction site, let's say every two weeks or once a month, and you're doing a time lapse mm-hmm. um, of the model, which you could really do some cool stuff if you did. Uh, so you made each model and then you essentially took a screenshot from a different location. You could do a time lapse of the models itself hmm. and then change out the models and it would essentially be a hyperlapse of 3D models put into a video. You could do some really cool stuff. That's crazy cool. But the point is, is you can leave the GCPs out there for the entirety of the construction project. So they always stay in the same place. They don't move from place to place. They're always in the same position. And that's also really important if you're doing construction progression mapping because having that GPS data and using something like Litchi to actually save the mapping mission. So Mm -hmm. you're actually doing the same mapping mission. You're taking the pictures from the same location. And you could even be doing corner shots. You know, we talk about the five... um, uh, what is it called? The four cardinal directions and then one shot straight down. You can save all of that in a mission through Litchi. And you can also save a time lapse or video movements through Litchi. So you literally lay down your GCPs the first time, create your mapping mission the first time, create your other missions for the first time. And then the second time you go out there, it literally takes a third or a fourth of the time that the initial uh, job was done. So you're literally leaving those GCPs out there indefinitely or mm-hmm. until the job's done? Until the job is done, yeah. Huh. I didn't realize that. Mm-hmm. By the way, this is all going to be in this uh, course that PJ is mm-hmm. filming now. Yeah, it's really awesome. It's going to be amazing. It really, yeah. Yes. It's going to be <laughs> so good. It's going to be the best construction course you've ever seen. So you're going out there, though, and you are using GCPs as, a, as opposed to some sort of RTK methodology. Like a Trimble unit. So a Trimble um, RTK GPS unit is like what you traditionally see when construction guys are in the very first phase of construction. And you see them with those like yellow tripods mm-hmm. and they've got like a laser on them and they're measuring points and places and distances. That's essentially like the most simple version of LiDAR with um, RTK GPS built into it, which cool. is essentially... Those tripods use Trimble GPS all the time. So it's just a little more antiquated. Mm, And the propeller system is really made for drone pilots. And I'm trying to get um, Mm. Rick Bowman to integrate a way to carry those in your cases. You can do it, Rick. Yeah. You got cases that do just about everything else. I forgot to pick up the freaking prototype for the wheels he's coming out with. That was like my idea Hmm. at, at... Airworks, and I feel like an idiot, and I haven't. You saw Rick at Airworks? Yeah, he was. Oh, nice. So was Bev. So it's always good to see her too. Yeah. But um, anyway, I think that answers his question uh, pretty well. I hope so. The only thing that we didn't touch on, and I don't know if this is the appropriate time or place, but he asked specifically about the five, the five twenty. Oh. And so um, how that plays into this? It really doesn't matter which vehicle you're using. Okay. So uh, I will say though that the unique um, GPS hold is uh, pretty pretty stellar. Yeah. So, I mean, the fact that it has the six props really makes it hold its position much better than a Phantom. I hate to hate to say that, but it's true. So, Can't I win like them all. It. Yeah. Actually, it's even better if you're trying to do hyperlapses and time lapses. You actually have to count and take the picture yourself. And I'm working, um, I've got to reach out to someone to see if there's a way to quote unquote hack the program mm-hmm. um, to get just a time lapse feature. But it's way better for hyperlapsing because how it controls its, uh, its position hold. So. Hmm. so, there you go. That's actually because he was just asking, is there any benefit to the unique? And that would be one. 
True. Anyways. Yeah. Um, hmm. Another benefit to the Unique, though, is it's really all in how they process the JPEG image. The way that you get a JPEG out of a Phantom is made for photography. The way that you get a JPEG out of a Typhoon H520 is made for mapping and modeling. You do get better information out of those images. Interesting. That said, you've done a lot of really good work with a Phantom. Yes. So. I have mapped just about everything with the Phantom. And in our Unique review that will be coming out, who knows when I'm having, you know, surgery this week, so I'm not sure it's going to happen this week, but, um, we've been modeling things with the unique and with the phantom and comparing the point clouds and the OBJs, uh, in the back end. And one thing I will say, there's a significant difference between a phantom four pro and a phantom four advanced, because mm -hmm. when it comes to mapping and modeling a unique typhoon H520 hands down destroys a Phantom 4 Advanced. Advanced, yeah. Um, and I think it's because of the interpolation of the photos. Hmm. But I haven't proven that yet, so I don't really want to say that just yet. But I will say, whenever we do a map and a model with a P4A instead of a P4P, we get a lot more noise in the images. Of course, the unique costs quite a bit more. But True. I think not enough to not justify getting it, if that makes sense. True. No, I think that does make sense. So cool. Uh, anyway, yeah, I think I think that's it. So I mean, if uh, in, unless you're ready to buy this new Phantom for me on Amazon, I think that's going to do it. <laughs> okay, let's keep this podcast going for a while then. <laughs> <laughs> we can maybe I can use a stall tactic. Well, tactic I thought you here. were going to get a Phantom too. I thought that was the whole idea. I'm getting the old one. Well, it's a good thing to practice on. Uh, no, I'm good with that. So I'm good with that. Rob is going to be getting much better flying this year. I am. That's a goal of 2018 for me. Because he's going to actually put the time in. That's the only that's reason. That's all it is. So. Yeah, that's all it is. Anyway, well, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, I'm about to fall asleep, and my name is Paul. <laughs> I'm Rob. <laughs> this is Ask Drone You. <laughs> <laughs>